This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, but the real star of today's show are the Thrustmaster T LCM pedals, that being the Load Cell Magnetic Pedal Set by Thrustmaster. This is a $200 standalone or integrated pedal set that you can get as of now. I have a link for the Amazon store to be able to purchase them on Amazon from Thrust, Thrustmaster as of right now. As I mentioned, they are standalone. You can plug them in on the USB. And I did another driving video already testing them out under those circumstances using a high-end wheel such as my Sim Experience AccuForce wheel. Now I want to plug them into a Thrustmaster base. So I've gone ahead and done the firmware update. You'll see all of that stuff in my installation and tuning video that is also available as of now. But this is just our second drive. We drove it once before. We did a little footage just to make some ch spring changes we did that other video where we drove it under usb circumstances with that other wheel and now we're going to drive it with a thrust master now really the only difference between what we did earlier and what we're doing now is the difference between 16-bit and 12-bit resolution out of the pedal set so when it's plugged in directly via usb it's 16-bit that's very 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 high resolution like 65,000 values if i'm not mistaken or now we're on 12-bit, which is going to be a little bit lower resolution, but I'm, I'm going to go out on a limb here and guess that I won't even be able to, to, to detect the difference myself. I'm just not that fine, that in tune. Maybe some of those aliens out there will feel the difference, but me, I'm not sure I will. So let's go ahead and see what it really feels like. And this is, again, our second drive, you know, a completely different pedal set. Takes some time to get used to. After just about 13 laps, when we were testing before, I was to the point that I was 96, 97% confident in the pedal and how it would react under usage. So we're going to pick up where we left off and see how it feels after just a matter of a handful of laps. I'll kind of talk about what I'm feeling as we're driving and uh, we'll see how it goes. I'm using a TSXW steering wheel, one of my favorite steering wheels. It's got that Sparco wheel rim on it. We are in the F3 car, so we really won't need the clutch. And if you guys know me well enough, I'll do some heel and toe from time to time just to test things out. But really, at this point in time, I mean, the clutch is becoming sort of a relic of racing. So anyway, let's get down to business. I haven't really mapped anything on my controls even other than just the shifters. So uh, let's see what it's like. All right, so the gas pedal, let's start with the gas pedal as we're driving along. And this is what I did. If you watch the USB version, we're going to be fairly similar. Um, but let's talk about the gas pedal first of all. The pedal set, let's talk about the whole pedal set in general. Again, it is a three-piece pedal. It is $200, and it is an add-on if you have Thrustmaster wheels and you want it all integrated, one USB for everything, running at 12-bit resolution. All you have to do is plug it into the wheelbase and you're up and running. Do a firmware update, things like that. Uh, we covered, again, all of that in our installation and tuning video. Uh, from there, uh, it also could be the standalone, as I mentioned, as a USB. So we are testing it plugged into the wheelbase, one USB into the computer for our whole setup. And again, this being a $200 upgrade in this case. So when you think of the pedals that come with, and as much as I love the TSXW base and wheel rim. I This is, for the money, this might be my absolute favorite wheel base and wheel rim. For the money, it's a really nice wheel base. It's a great wheel rim, and it doesn't set you back that heavily. However, the pedal set that comes with it is just what you've known from Thrustmaster for a long time. Sure, they use their heart system or their Hall Effects magnetic sensors for reading all of the pedals, but... The effect that you get, the feeling you feel on your foot is nothing but spring, spring tension. And that honestly takes us all the way back to the very, very original days of sim racing, the very beginning days of Thrustmaster. And what gave us the resistance or the forces that we needed out of our pedals to be able to drive competently. Well, fast forward two decades nearly. And we're to the point where you can get load cell, you can get hydraulic brakes. There are all sorts of very, very high-end pedals. It's very easy to spend $1,500, $2,000 on a pedal set. Very easy. And um, But with that said, the pedal set that came with the Thrustmaster lineup was just this dated thing. And so 
I have been waiting for this pedal set for a very long time. You're going to hear me say that over and over if you watch all the videos about the T TLS LCM pedals. Um, because it's just one of those things I've been waiting forever for them to upgrade their pedals. I think for a lot of people who are Thrustmaster fans, this is going to be the greatest thing ever. Um, and, and for those who, who've stayed away because they're going to use a different brand of pedal, uh, this could, could keep it all in the family, so to speak. So with that said, it is a three pedal set. They are adjustable in that there are different spring rates that you can put on for the brake pedal. The gas and the clutch, really the only adjustment you really have on those is the ability to move the pedal faces up, down, left, right. You can even stagger the distance uh, and put a little thicker pad so a pedal might be closer. So for example, for heel toe, I like to have my brake pedal just a little further towards me than the gas so I can give it a little bit of brake before I'm gonna try to blip for a downshift. Um, I've gone ahead and put that stagger. I have that on my ga my gas, I'm sorry, my clutch and my brake pedal. Uh, other than that, it is a plastic case, but it's a really heavy plastic. It's got that metal heel plate, which under my feet right now, they feel very, very sturdy. Like, so right now we're comparing the, the flex of the whole thing, like my heel, the weight of my body on my heels on the plate. And it feels very solid. I wouldn't know if it was plastic or metal just from putting my heels down there and driving. Uh, earlier, I drove in driving shoes, and now I'm just driving in some tennis shoes just to kind of feel the differences, how it works with different situations. We'll try some uh, socks only later. It is a pretty heavy brake pedal, so we can only do so much of that. All right, now let's talk about the gas pedal. It's a very solid pedal. Meaning, there's no flex whatsoever. So when you think of low-end pedal sets, that's something you'll actually feel when you get to that stopping point where you feel, you know, you put it at full throttle and you feel the arm or the, the pad that your foot goes on flexing once you've achieved full uh, throw. In the case of this, it's, it's rock solid, very stiff. However, at the end of the throw, you can feel that there is a rubber stop of some sort. Now it must be very thin and very solid because there's no feel in it. There's no flex. I can't squish it at all. But it means when the pedal hits the end of its throw, it's not a metal on metal clack that some pedals will do. That can be a little annoying actually. So this is a nice comfortable end of the throw. If you're doing long races, that little extra vibration or, or, or hit can actually make a difference at times. So that's nice. Uh, the travel, the throw, I haven't measured it. And when we do, uh, when you watch the other videos, uh, like our review, for example, we'll cover how much the exact amount of throw is in all those video in that video. But for now, just going by what I feel on my second drive, whoa, whoa, a little too much curbing there. <coughs> um, it's a good usable amount of throw. If I had to guess, I would guess it's probably about two inches. So it is a, a, a lighter amount of throw, probably very similar to the distance of the original Thrustmaster pedals as far as the actual distance from off throttle to full throttle. Um, it's just enough room where I do have some variance and some variability, even with just a spring tension as the resistance. It's, it's a light pedal. Not a lot of resistance. It's very, there's nothing holding you back from going to full throttle. Yes, there's a spring. Yes, there's tension, but it's certainly not enough to, uh, too much to overcome or fight. And that's not something that's adjustable on the pedal. It is very smooth, very smooth. I mean, like you almost can't even feel any movement other than you know the pedals moved because you've moved the foot but other than the spring tension there's no additional grinding no side to side movement none of that kind of stuff whatsoever none at all all right so it's a good throttle pedal good and smooth good and solid comfortable end stop Little small on the amount of travel coming in at about two, two and a half inches. We'll get that in the review. But, uh, but again, I'm, I'm having no trouble 
finding, so here's a good example, this corner coming off. I'm having no problem rolling on the throttle. There's enough distance, enough variance to work with that I'm able to roll on the throttle coming off of the corner. Yeah, oh, oh, I overdid that, but same. Yeah, I find myself really getting through the first half really smoothly and easily. And then at that point is about when I'm dropping the hammer a little more liberal with the amount of rate of speed that I press the throttle down. That's the throttle pedal. All right. Whoa. Now let's talk about the brake. Oh, the brake. Coming from what would have been the pedals that came with these or, you know, any of the uh, Thrustmaster pedals. Again, the brake has always just been a spring and a little rubber conical mod, which certainly helped and gave it a dual rate feeling. Now, with this, what I have, I have a much more complex spring system. So right here, coming into this corner here, I just lightly brush the brake. Well, I didn't do enough, of course, because I'm talking about it. Uh, it's a very light amount of brake in this car at times, like that high-speed corner. And if you overdo the braking, even if you don't cause lockup, just that extra friction will sometimes induce understeer and take the car wide. It's very important to be able to do that, that changing of balance or reduction of speed on a light side, like right here even. I don't want to over brake. Over braking is as bad as under braking for that high speed corner. You don't want to unsettle the car too much. Same thing there. And that light braking is done by the dual progression in the springs. So we have, I went to the heavy springs on this set. And with the heavy springs, I've got the stiffest thing they've got. But I did leave the lightweight middle spring in. And what that allows is about 10, 15% braking with just the lightest of touch. But if you want more than that, you're gonna have to start compressing the bigger springs and you can notice it in the amount of pressure it takes in your foot giving you a dual progression, which is nice. And then on top of the spring tension, which was that, and that's a combination that I sorted. <laughs> I could have gone with the black and gray spring. I could have gone with a black and white. I could have gone with any combination. There are three different strengths of spring to choose from and any combination. I also could have stacked washers inside of the silver spring and gotten rid of any of that 10%, 15% preload, we'll call it so that that silver spring would never compress. It would just instantly bypass the spring and go into the reds. Well, I actually like that. Again, using Brands Hatch as an example, these high speed corners where maybe sometimes I want just a little bit of nose, just a little, but I don't want to overdo it. I want a, 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 something that's going to protect me from overdoing the break under those light scrubbing moments. And that dual progression is doing that. So I did not stack washers in the silver spring. Uh, I liked having just a, little bit it's almost like a instead of a dead zone it's like a a, a small zone where you're only going to get 10 to 15 percent instead of full braking at your availability now of course you push through that and you get full brakes no problem the smoothness of, okay so that's the first part of what we're getting resistance wise <coughs> then on top of that that is all multiplied by or goes directly into the load cell now, why I love a load cell so much, if I'm doing heavy braking, let's talk heavy braking first. I kind of told you the advantage of the 10, 15% soft zone uh, that I like and using it for light braking, like right here. Again, let's see if I can get it right this time. But yeah, it's just a light amount of braking without upsetting the car is going to be your fastest way. If you don't overdrive the corner, oh, that's twice now talking about the corner and I crashed. Um... So what I'm getting about with full braking, and at Brands Hatch, there's only a few spots where I'm at full, full braking, but I like the way this track tests all the different types. And I know that's what I was doing earlier. I just wanted to use the exact same circumstances. So when comparing 16-bit to 12-bit, could I tell? Um, and I, as far as I can tell, the answer is no. Um, so, okay, so heavy braking with the load cell, you've got that dual rate action of the red spring, silver spring. Here's a heavy braking zone. 
And then see how, oh, we're right on the verge of lockup. You could, well, you guys can't hear it, but if you could see what I'm seeing and hear what I'm hearing, I am just flirting with that moment. I am breaking so hard that the front wheels are trying desperately to hold on. And you can hear that noise they make right before lockup. And that is the moment that I can just, without even thinking about it, just slightly reduce pressure. And that slight reduction of pressure, I don't have to use a distance. I'm not trying to be precise with distance, which is really tough to do when I'm concentrating on what I feel and see, right? Not what I'm looking at. So distance is not a great measurement with my foot, but pressure, pressure is something my foot can measure and read very well. And I get to that point where you start to heal the, hear the brake lock up and you're just backing off. It's not even releasing a distance. It's releasing a pound, two pounds, 10 pounds. That's all it takes. Again, light braking is really awesome. I, I, I have to tell you, is this a, a, a $1,500, $2,000 uh, hydraulic brake set? No, no, it is not. It is a $200 set that completely, completely changes the Thrustmaster wheel. If you have this wheel and you're on the old pedals, this $200 upgrade is about as big a upgrade as you could make to this wheel. If you are out there and you're on a, a wheel and you're just using potentiometer type pedals and you're on a budget, you cannot beat what I'm feeling out of this brake pedal for $200. It is a really solid pedal set. It is giving me all of the effects of a load cell. Now the load cell, even with these red springs, I will say, Compared to those big boy multi-thousand dollar pedals, it's a lightweight spring. So it's still not super heavy. I'm driving in shoes for comfort, but in the next consideration I'll make before a full review would be, well, do I still race in socks? I mean, with my heavy pedals, I've kind of switched to being a shoe type racer nowadays. So that'd be the next thing. Is it strong enough? So they say it's about a hundred pounds of pressure and at that kind of pressure, you would start to think that that's going to push the boundaries of a bare foot or a sock. But again, just being able to do these light braking zones, being able to do threshold braking with confidence all the way to apex. Oh, I went down to second gear because I'm not 100% paying attention as I try to talk. Light scrub there, but you don't want to do too much or it'll upset the car. Little variants of the gas to not get oversteer on exit. All right, heavy braking into one, but you don't want to stick it or it will send you off the track. There you go, nice, nice. Heavy braking here all the way to apex. Little scrub of the brake just to make sure you're gonna stay in control here and go. And then here we have a very light, long trail brake. Nice. Coming up here, you don't really need any brakes. Sometimes I'll just rest my foot on the brake pedal just to make sure, but I don't want to cause any understeer under braking. Same thing here, just a little bit in a downshift and go, go, go. Not a bad lap coming up here. Same thing there, just enough to set that nose into the ground. Heavy threshold braking all the way to apex. Go. A little off my best, but a good lap. Good lap. Whoop. All right, so there is our second drive, this time plugged directly into the Thrustmaster TSXW base. We're now on 12-bit. I wouldn't, honestly, I really wouldn't know, uh, but it means that now this is an Xbox compatible setup as well. I have a load cell brake on a very affordable combination that is now Xbox compatible, and that right there is pretty outstanding for a lot of people. Again, it's, it's really the best upgrade you can do if you're sitting on a Thrustmaster wheelbase. And if you're out there on any wheelbase, still running around on just springs, measuring your pedals, 
you really got to consider this as a USB standalone because $200 just blows away, blows away the price of any other load cell pedal market on the market. Um, in a lot of cases, I've seen where a mod might cost almost $200. So my hat's off to Thrustmaster on doing, they look good, they feel good, and they drive good, and $200. And it's something that they have needed, they being Thrustmaster, for so, so long. Dates all the way back to the T1. We didn't know we'd be using load cells back in those days, but at this point in time, this is the modern era of sim racing. So many fine products to, to choose from. And this is a, a sign that Thrustmaster is really uh, changing things, getting modernized and getting their things to the point where what we as sim racers demand in 2020. So congratulations, Thrustmaster, two drives in a row. And I'm to the point where, again, I could do a league race. I could do a points race. I could do an endurance race on that setup right now with total confidence. Uh, and, and that is the best testament when it comes to a test drive and knowing how it feels. Now, this is a car I'm used to. So uh, it was a good starting point, but again, it, it really showed me the difference between, I mean, basically I'd be using this clutch for a brake. Now I've got this kind of feeling, progressive, uh, uh, a balancing point, balancing on the results I'm getting from the car, reducing pressure by just pounds at a time um, in a blink of an eye. Just, it, it really works out well. Anyway, I know it sounds like I'm gloating, but $200 for a load cell pedal set is a game changer and and it makes it pretty easy to gloat and they do work really really well uh well done thrustmaster anyway i hope you enjoyed the show if you have more one information you can find our installation and adjustments video you can also see our other driving video where we did it direct usb at 16 bit and you can also find our full review and our unboxing so plenty of videos to check out this depending on what kind of information you're looking for but i hope you enjoyed this driving video this is the sim pit I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.